This episode has been brought to you by our super generous supporters on Patreon. One of the largest ice shelves in the world just gave birth to one of the largest icebergs in history. It could trigger a catastrophic collapse of the entire ice shelf, the disappearance of which could amplify global sea level rise. But this isn't the first ice shelf collapse to happen, and it won't be the last. Good Stuff producer Matt Weber tells the story of the Larsen Ice Shelf and why you should know thy shelf before it's gone forever. Like any good Norwegian, Carl Anton Larsen didn't go anywhere without his skis. In 1893, he was in Antarctica, a place only a handful of people had ever been, and no one had ever skied. So when he encountered a massive wall of ice, never before seen by human eyes, he had no choice but to ski upon it. Little did he know that everything he saw from horizon to horizon would one day bear his name, the Larsen Ice Shelf. An ice shelf is a floating sheet of ice permanently affixed to a landmass. They only exist in areas of the world where it is cold enough to support them, like the Arctic, Greenland, Russia, and Antarctica. There used to be several Larsen ice shelves, each one designated with a letter from A to F, but A, B, and C were by far the largest. They congealed around the Antarctic Peninsula, occupying its entire length for thousands of years. But in recent decades, these ice shelves have been disappearing. Larsen A disappeared in 1995. It lay right on the tip of the peninsula, positioned only a little over 600 miles from the foot of South America. Larsen A was subject to warmer waters than its siblings. For thousands of years, it waxed and waned until it completely disintegrated, never to return. But its disappearance wasn't as shocking as the collapse of its sibling, Larsen B, seven years later. Larsen B had been stable for at least 10,000 years, longer than recorded civilization. If you're a young Earth creationist, this makes Larsen B older than the entire universe. And in 2002, it took only three weeks for Larsen B an ice shelf the size of Rhode Island whose existence predates the written word to vanish from the face of the earth. Now, very little of Larsen B remains, and what does remain is expected to be completely gone by the end of the decade. The Larsen C ice shelf is even larger and older. It has inhabited the Antarctic coastline for longer than anatomically modern humans have existed, over 100,000 years. And this illustrates how the ice that Carl Anton Larsen skied across is substantially different than any ice you faced in Norway and most ice that you have experienced in your entire lifetime. Most ice that you encounter is fleeting. It comes and goes. It's seasonal, hardly lasts for more than a couple months at most before it melts away. The ice in Larsen B and C is old, prehistoric even. Because of its great age and stability, the Larsen ice shelf is more akin to a geologic feature than a bunch of frozen water. Thus, its breakup is like the Grand Canyon suddenly crumbling and disappearing forever. In 2015, a rift appeared in the Larsen C ice shelf. Over the next several months, the crack grew at an astounding 33 feet per day reaching over 120 miles in length. On July 12th, 2017, it finally broke off from the ice shelf entirely, creating a trillion ton iceberg larger than the state of Delaware. Larsen C is itself the size of Scotland, but this calving event points to an increasingly unstable shelf, which could lead to its rapid disintegration, like its sibling, Larsen B. Because the ice shelf is floating on the ocean, Larsen C is already displacing an amount of water equal to its volume. So its melting wouldn't raise sea levels directly, but it has acted as a catch for the glaciers on the mainland of Antarctica. Losing Larsen C means losing the dam that has been holding back these melting glaciers. We've already seen this happening where Larsen A and B used to be. The glaciers they used to shore up have rapidly thinned, much of them running directly into the ocean. If Larsen C disappeared, one of the world's largest collection of glaciers would pour directly into the ocean, raising sea levels by as much as four inches. Now that might not sound like much, but it'd only take a sea level rise of a foot to begin the inundation of low-lying cities like New Orleans and Miami. But the Larsen Ice Shelf isn't the only ice shelf in danger. The Wilkins Ice Shelf on the southwest side of the Antarctic Peninsula began disintegrating in 2008. In 2009, the last remnants of the ice shelf disappeared. The Ross Ice Shelf is the world's largest ice shelf shelf. Located on the southern side of the continent, it covers an area of sea the size of Spain, almost seven times as large as Larsen Sea. Researchers have kept a close eye on it for years now. If the Antarctic Sea warms by just a few degrees, the Ross Ice Shelf could experience a breakup like Larsen, just as rapid, but much greater in scale, because it is currently holding back enough glaciers to cause a five meter or 16 foot sea level rise. That would be enough to flood almost every coastal city in the entire world. 
Ice shelves make up over 10% of Antarctica's total area. Much of what we know of Antarctica is ice shelf. If all the ice shelves disappeared, it'd be like the United States losing an area of land larger than the state of Texas. The very geography and ecology of Antarctica would be irreparably altered, and so would the entire world. All of this is because of global warming due to the increase of CO2 in the atmosphere caused by human activity. In the Antarctic Peninsula, where the Larsen Ice Shelf currently resides, it's one of the fastest warming areas on the planet. But when the Larsen Ice Shelf will completely disappear is unknown. All we can do is give our best estimates and projections using the evidence available and historical precedent. Because the greatest danger we face isn't the loss of this ancient ice. It's an unprecedented future that leaves us all on an unstable footing. It's been a little over a century since Carl Anton Larsen became the first person to see the Larsen Ice Shelf. Now, it's only a matter of time before someone becomes the last. So what do you think? Is it too late to save Larsen C? Can we save the rest of Antarctica's ice shelves? How do we save the world? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and please share this video so that it won't not ever be seen by human eyes. Special thanks to our Patreon supporters for making this episode of The Good Stuff possible. Without Patreon, this show just wouldn't happen. So, if you like the show and you want it to continue, and or you have an affinity for massive sheets of ice, which I'm assuming we'll talk about again at some point, head on over to our Patreon page and support the show. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.